What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is The Dugout with Nick Beasley, my new baseball exclusive show. Today we're going to talk about Dodgers Padres from Seoul, North Korea this morning. How I thought the game went because I was live. I watched the entire thing. Thought it was a fun game. I really did. So, let's start out with the stats here. So for the Dodgers, batting, Betts, 2 for 4, Otani, 2 for 5, Freeman, 0 for 2 but had 2 walks, Smith, 1 for 4, also had a walk, Max Muncy, 1 for 3, he also had a run in. Yo, let's not get into all that. The Shohei Show has come to town. Dodger fans are excited again because Shohei Otani is officially a Dodger. Shohei Otani showed up and showed out and played fantastic in this game. I thought he played well. He didn't play great, but you know what? It's opening day. We've got tonight or tomorrow morning's game between the Dodgers and Padres. Again, 5 a.m. I will be live for that. As I will for every Dodgers game this year. And I know in this video we're strictly talking about the Dodgers and how they did. Because they're the only other team outside of the Padres to open up their season this early. Everybody else starts on like the 28th. So I will be doing more videos about more games. And doing full shows of the dugout. When all those games start, I'm only covering regular season and postseason. When the postseason comes, I will cover all the games. I will also be live for every single one of the games. And let's just have some fun here. I want to talk about what Mad Dog Russo said about Shohei Otani. Mad Dog Russo, you are a... You used to be a respected man in baseball. But after what you said today on first take about Shohei Otani, how, or my bad, get up, about Shohei Otani, how he's not pitching and so it's not that good because he's not special, you have lost all credibility. Shohei Otani, whether he is pitching, hitting, doing both, it doesn't matter. People are going to buy tickets to watch him and whatever he does is going to be special. I know you said, Well, he's doing what everybody else can do in the league. Not really. Because not everybody else in the majors can just completely ignore the rules. Shohei can. Not everybody else in the majors can get a $700 million contract. Shohei did. And let's talk about Yoshi I, hold on. Yeah, I think it's, let me go here real quick. He's starting in the next, next game. My bad, guys. Yeah, Yamamoto. Let's talk about Yamamoto. Listen, I, I appreciate, I truly appreciate the pitcher that played this morning for the Dodgers. Okay? I do. Okay? But we got to stop this this notion that Glasgow, Glasgow should have been, should have been pulled. He should have been pulled early, should not have been, uh, he should not have went into the fifth, uh, fifth inning. There's no chance. He should have been pulled before that. He was walking people. It was bad. It scared me half to death. For the first five, uh, the first seven innings of that, of that ball game, the offense was not doing anything that I thought they would. And Glass now was bad on the mound. It was a bad outing for him, and I get it. It's just day one. It's you know season opener. It, it's North Korea, or I'm sorry, South Korea. They're opening in front of this entire state. I don't care. You're a professional baseball player. You're a professional pitcher. You should not consistently, as a fan, I should not consistently watch you pitch and think, 
Oh my God, he can't throw a strike consistently. But that's what I thought watching him, because he can't. And it's okay, but you can't throw a strike consistently. And again, it's okay. Not really, but I'll let it slide. I think the game went well. Again, Glasnow struggled. Not surprised. Um, Yamamoto is starting tomorrow morning. I will be live again for that. I'm excited to see Yamamoto. I know a lot. Like uh, a lot of people are like, "Yeah, I hope he gets lit up." Stop. Okay, stop this hatred. And you know what? I I do kind of agree though with something that Jessica Mendoza and Mad Dog said on first take. The Dodgers' season starts in October. We can win 90 games. We can win 100 games. But in October, we have struggled to win. Now, they did kind of discredit the 2020 World Series championship, which as a Dodgers fan, I claim that championship. It's ours. If if, if Lakers fans, uh, if we're going to say that the Dodgers haven't won the World Series in 30-plus years, then... LeBron never brought a championship to L.A. LeBron never brought that title to Le- to the Lakers, right? If if we're gonna say that, you know, the, the Dodgers didn't win it and you know didn't really win it in 2020 because it was the COVID year, then the Lakers didn't win it in 2020 either. I bet there's gonna be a lot of basketball people that say I'm stupid for saying that. There's a lot of baseball people that believe that people that say the Dodgers haven't done it in 30 years because we haven't done a full season. The 2020 season does still count. The 2020 season, I could argue, is actually more difficult than the 2019, 2018, 2017. Because there wasn't a worldwide pandemic. Because players didn't have to go through not knowing if they could play or not. But now, we have and I agree. We have Betts, Freeman, Otani in the top three of our starting lineup. I have high hopes for Gavin Lux. And by the way, I do kind of feel bad for Cronenworth. Okay, the first baseman from the uh, from the Padres. His glove broke, or Gavin would have been out. But Gavin wasn't out, and Gavin played well today. I. I was a little concerned about him playing second base because he's a pre, he's primarily a shortstop. He's played shortstop his whole career. I was a little concerned about him playing second base, but after kind of seeing what he what he did, you know, I have no issues with him now. I think again, I think Gavin is a great young player. I think he got halted a little bit in his growth, obviously last year with the injury. I think this year the kid can hit. He can he, he can move on the base pass. He's a he's a really good infielder. I think his infielding is actually underrated. Because, again, I think he's really good. I think he's very quick, a very good IQ, very good baseball mind. And I'd have no problem right now putting him. If we want to put him at five, maybe on the Dodgers lineup. I, I know Muncy's in the lineup, but honestly, Max Muncy did not really impress me last year. I don't expect big things from him this year. I'd say, and he kind of got the rally started that got us the 5-2 lead, uh, did Gavin Lux. I think having him in the 9-hole, which is where they had him today, I don't know if they're going to have him there tomorrow, but I think having him in the 9-hole or going forward is a good place because you kind of get him to kind of get it started, then you got Betts, Otani, and Freeman right behind him. I think the middle of our lineup with Hayward and, um, you know, Muncie and... I'm blanking on his name, the left fielder's name, and then Altman. Um, Hernandez. I think having them is not a bad thing. I don't think they're going to be the pillars, though. Like, I love James Altman, and I'm so glad that he's our center fielder because he's a significant upgrade from what Cody Bellinger was for the Dodgers as far as hitting. But I don't think he's going to be that good of a player this early. I think he needs another year, right? He came onto the scene last year and absolutely blew it up and played great for us, and I appreciate that. I think he's going to need another year to develop. 
I think Hernandez is going to need another year to develop. And he's an older player. I still think in this system, in the Dodgers kind of lineup, he's going to be a forgotten name. I think Hayward will be a forgotten name. I think Max Muncy is going to be a forgotten name. I think when you look at our lineup, you've got Betts, you've got Otani, and obviously Freeman. Those are the big three, right? I think Gavin Lux is kind of squeezing in at number five with Will Smith still at number four. And I know uh, Mad Dog Russo said that Will Smith isn't really a cleanup hitter. I just need him to get on base. See, that's the thing. I just need him to get on base. I think we should move Gavin Lux up to the five spot. I just need Will Smith and Max Muncy, honestly, to work counts. To get the pitch count up on the pitcher. To get him out of the game sooner. Because they did a decent job of that today. And I think they're going to do a really good job of that tomorrow as well. So I just needed them to kind of work the pitch count. I don't need them to be elite guys, right? Will Smith can hit. There is no issue with that. The kid can hit. Great catcher for us. I need him to be solid on defense. And I need him to just kind of work the count a little bit. I think that's all he really needs to do. Same with Muncy. Muncy needs to be a solid third baseman and kind of work the count. And nobody will work a count better than Max Muncy anyway, from what I've seen. So I appreciate that. And I think Gavin Lux is kind of taking notes from Max Muncy when it comes to working the count. Because he was more patient today. He was more relaxed today. And ultimately, I think that's what's going to make him a better hitter than Max Muncy. Because he's starting at a young age. And he is still... Not even 30 yet, and he is just working and working and working. Now, let's talk about this uh, pitch clock. Because the Dodgers got gifted, and people will say this, so I'll agree. We got gifted with some pitch clock violations today. I didn't love it. Because it gives people an excuse. Oh, well, the Dodgers wouldn't have beat the Padres with the pitch clock. I understand that. But at the same time, the batter and the pitcher have to know the time on the clock that they have to be ready. So if the batter is in their stance and they're ready and the pitcher gets past his time and he's not ready and it's a pitch clock violation, that's on the pitcher. That's not on the batter. Batter was ready. Now, I do think it is a little annoying, though, when they have those pitch clock violations. I think we had like four today, and that was extremely frustrating to watch. But again, I have no issue with the pitch clock, because it speeds the game up. What would have normally been about a four to five hour stream today became like a three and a half hour stream. I was, you know, from 5 a.m. to about 8.30 and I was done. And uh, tomorrow, I'm hoping the same thing. Maybe a little bit quicker. Just, you know, it's going to depend. I'm a baseball purist, though, so I don't really care about the time duration of the game. You can give me a four hour game. Heck, I love the over. I, I love the extra innings games. And I love the new rule with the extra innings. We haven't seen it come into play yet this year in the regular season. Obviously, only one game. It almost did, though. I thought for a minute when it was like one-to-one, I thought, oh, no, we are going to get an extra innings. And then the you know the Padres scored as two-to-one. And then the Dodgers opened it up in the eighth inning and kind of just blew the door open. But I think it was a good game. Now, I do think Aaron Judge is going to have a major year for the Yankees this year. I think him and Soto together probably combine for about, I'm going to say they combine for 80 home runs. I'm not going to say who's going to have more and get that number closer to 80, but I think them two together, plus Stanton, but specifically those two together, will combine for about 80 home runs. Also, I think Soto is going to be playing in the center field spot, maybe left field. I'm not really sure where they're going to put Stanton. Uh, Judge is obviously the right fielder. That's not changing. Unless they move Judge to center field and let Soto go to uh, right field. Which if they do, cool. I'm cool with that. That's awesome. I just don't see that happening. But I do think the Yankees are primed for a big year. I do. I think the Pirates could be a sneaky team. Later in the year, they've got young pitching. They're a they're a veteran led group though, offensively. But they got young pitching, and Paul Skeens out of LSU has been putting on a show during the uh, 
minor leagues, if he gets called up to the majors early, oh man, look out. That brother is going to be great. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is again called The Dugout with Nick Beasley. It's a whole new show. I know it still says Nick Beasley show up there, but this is a whole new show with a whole new perspective just strictly on baseball. Peace.